Ah, oh, give everyone the last bells are ringing in the halls. We'll get started. So welcome everyone. So lovely to see you all here after a, another amazing lunch. Too many, too many good, too, too much good food for me. Um, so my name's Kathy Burkage. As you might tell from the accent, I am from Australia. I am Melbourne based. Um, I've been in IT since the 1980s. I started doing these crazy development stuff way back then. I used to do assembler coding and C coding and stuff like that back in the old, old days. Um, I've been working agile, whoa, there's a lot of echo there. Uh, working agile since the 1990s, uh, delivering all sorts of different roles, sometimes as a BA, sometimes as a scrum master, nowadays mostly coaching and training. I'm not quite sure what's happening with that echo. Anywho. Uh, a little bit too much about me, you can all read all that stuff in my profile. If you go on LinkedIn, you'll see way too much about my history, etc. etc. On your tables, we have some tables with nothing, and every other table with something. So if you want to move away from a table with nothing onto a table with something, it's probably a good idea. <laughs> on the tables with something, you will find some Aussie souvenirs, you can find amongst them about yourself, some koalas and roos and key rings and pens, a few random things. A present from me to you, because every time I come to India, I find your present is, I get too much, <laughs> so I want to give some back. So a little bit of Aussie there. And throughout our session today, I'm giving away some Australian cricket caps. Well, they're not cricket caps, they're just Australian caps. I've got a couple of them to give away to those who participate and answer the question the most correct way. I'm not quite sure that the audio seems to be a bit dodge, audio person, up, down, echoing, not bad. Um, so this is a workshop. You're working in this shop, and I'm going to stand back and watch you work, which is going to be great. Um, <laughs> uh, today, we're going to do t my passion, my number one passion when it comes to agile, working in teams, working with teams, training teams, whatever the case might be, my number one passion is to see teams thrive, see teams succeed, see teams cooperate, and of course, see teams being awesome, happy, harmonious, and collaborating. Over the years, I've seen teams do some better than others, and I found the common theme with the teams that did the best was this real sense of camaraderie, real teamwork, knowing how we behave in the team, knowing what's expected in the team, knowing how we're going to work together and achieve this thing that we've been given by our stakeholders, by our businesses. And it's not the processes, because we know it's individuals and interactions over processes and tools. We know it's not about um, contracts, it's not about documentation, it's not about plans, it's about the team really coming together. So over the years I've sort of talked about it, researched about it, talked to a lot of other people about it and uh, working with one of my teams back in Melbourne just before the pandemic, we were doing some teamwork and we were trying to identify why the team was not succeeding, why this team was having so many difficulties. What were the issues? What were the common patterns? What were the common anti-patterns? And it just so happened at that time, we had a lean canvas in front of us with the summary of the work. And I said, let's use this canvas as a template to figure out our teamwork. And the rest is kind of history. And that's what I'm here to talk about today is the team canvas. Um, there's been quite a lot of canvases here, and one thing that's been amazing in this particular conference, more so than any other that I've been to recently, is the emphasis on teamwork, the emphasis on those soft skills. Yes, there's some great stuff about the other stuff, but really it's the, the soft skills, the communication, those kinds of things are what's going to get you over the line, not just the tools and techniques, even though our sponsors have got some great tools out there, of course, go visit them. So I'm here to talk about teamwork, how do we create awesome teams, not just ordinary teams. For those who were in the amazing workshop yesterday with um, Richard, well, that was a fantastic session. 
And this is the next tool to take on from there, I think. Um, I was in that session and I just went, yes, 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 all the way through because it does start with the personal reflection and then what you bring into the team. So from that canvas that he presented yesterday, this is probably a next tool to bring it together, bring some of that together for those who in that team, that session. I'm not going to go back and go through everything he went through, but those who were there, certainly that would be a springboard to where we're going today. So please, a couple of uh, ground rules for our workshop. Ask any question any time. Don't wait for the end. <laughs> I'd rather address your questions as we go. So just, you know, wave. We'll get a microphone to you um, at any time. I'm not going to just wait to the end. Of course, there will be time at the end for questions. But please don't wait for questions. You can ask any time. Uh, and the number two rule is that there is no silly question except for one. Do you know what it is? The one you don't ask. That's the only silly question. If you leave that room and go, gee, I wish I talked to Kathy about that, you know what, I'm going to be on a plane and I'll be away. I mean, you can find me on LinkedIn. And I do, um, I'll have my contact details up later. Find me on LinkedIn. I mean it honestly when I'm happy to connect and I'm happy to help you if there's any questions after this session anyhow. All right, let's get into it, shall we? So what is a team? Who can tell me? What do we mean by the word team? I love this. Common objective. Yep. What was he going to say here? Very similar. Nice. Any, anything else? Common goal, definitely. So a couple of definitions for us. I always try to start at the very basics. Um, a team is a group of individuals, human and non-human. It's hilarious to think about it because you think of the old days. We worked with horses. <laughs> we worked with... Computers, <laughs> my PC is part of my team, yeah. <laughs> so we are working together to achieve a goal. Um, we are interdependent. We are interdependent. No one of us succeeds without the other. There's that interdependency of all of us together. None of us make it alone. All of us make it together. So we're doing that with respect to information, resources, knowledge and skills to combine our efforts to achieve that common goal. And... A group of people does not necessarily mean a team because it's that sense of purpose, that sense of common goal, that sense that we're all here together is what is the big difference. So that's what we mean by team. Let me just grab something here, which I forgot to grab before. But that's okay, I've got it now. Um, so what is teamwork? Working together, yep. Yep, synergies. I oh, love that team working together, supporting each other, exactly. A collaborative effort has achieved a common goal to complete a task, cooperative and coordinated work. Um, so it's all that common sense. Um, but we all know teamwork isn't that easy. It's all very well to say that. Cooperation, collaboration, communication, cohesion, these are all the C words we hear. But you can have each of those without that true sense of collaboration. And that's what Agile asks of us, is to truly collaborate, truly share, truly support each other, truly be there for one another. Because it's not my goal or your goal or your goal, it's our goal together. And that goal is something beyond ourselves. Not, number one is to satisfy the customer. For those who know your Agile manifesto, you know it's principle number one and it's priority number one. And we're here to do that exact thing. Um, people who report to the same manager do not necessarily constitute a team. The fact that we just report to that guy, we could be working on completely different things. Um, so I also wanted to kind of call that one out because there's a lot of people that say, yeah, it's my teammate. And I'm like, so what's your common goal? Um, I'm trying to get a promotion. I'm like, mm, it's not quite what we mean. So there's some few thoughts there about teamwork. Now, uh, this is a, uh, some information from Carl Weck, who did a lot of, uh, I've got the reference there and probably somewhere in the back there, um, improvisation mindsets. And 
he came up with this concept of talking about teamwork in comparison to people playing music. When we think about an orchestra, a symphony orchestra, with all the string section and the brass section and the woodwind section and the drum section and, and the violins and all that, we've got one person at the front conducting. That's not what we mean. He really talked about this agile collaboration, more like a jazz band. A jazz band where they respond to each other, where they spontaneously um, act in, in the moment rather than this rigid kind of way. This one person conducting everybody. No, the team are always kind of looking for each other, looking at each other's energy, what's happening with each of our team members. And we're doing that in real time without waiting for someone to prompt us. And that's really what this theory is all about. Um, so if we're, gonna, if we're looking for innovation, we're looking for speed to delivery, if we're looking to satisfy our customers in a value-driven way that Agile seeks of us, we've got to start thinking about how we are there for each other, how we feed off each other, how we all contribute to each other's success. So we're there together to help each other develop to their own best potential. That's what I loved about the session yesterday is if we call those things out, if we make it clear what our best potential aspirations are, then we can understand them together and help each other towards that goal. So yes, we've got a common goal together as a team, but we're also supporting each other to be their best selves. And that's kind of what I'm looking at. So some of the concepts that um, are come up with these is the first one is just enough structure. Enough so we're on the same page, enough so we've got agreement, enough so we know what is and isn't going to happen, but not so much that it's rigid and it's law and it's all about we must follow this process and we must stick to these rules. Just enough to allow flexibility as needed, but just enough so we're all on the same page. And that's really important. Um, matching the pace rather than working independently. Now, this is one that sounds easy and we all understand it, but I've been in enough dev teams and I've worked with enough dev teams to know that the devs are miles ahead, the testers are 90% of the time trying to keep up and people don't want to talk about it. I've already finished that code. No, go back and reset it. It's like, no, there isn't. <laughs> no, 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 no. We want to match that. And again, before we talked about those short cycles, 15-minute cycles, TDD, um, you know, pair programming and all those kinds of concepts. Yeah, they're great, but it doesn't have to be just in devs and tests. It can be with BAs and, and CXs together. It can be in any kind of skill group. So it's that real sense of we're matching each other with the rate that we're working and we don't leave people behind. We don't move to the next story. We don't move to the next test. We don't move to the next requirement until we're finished and we're all together on this one. How many of you got that really happening in your teams? I've rarely seen it. I normally see the tests running ahead, and the testers running behind, and the BAs somewhere in between, usually. I'm a BA by trade, just putting it out there too. Uh, <laughs> so I'm a tester originally, though. Um, acting in real time over following a plan. I mean, that sounds like a magile manifesto thing, doesn't it? <laughs> Things change. What we hoped happened, what we wanted to happen, may not happen, so we need to be able to respond in real time rather than saying, oh, well, we said today we're doing this particular integration or we're doing this particular release. We need to act on real time. Um, another one is using previous experience because everybody in the team has experience, typically, unless you literally just come out of school, which can happen, but chances are you're not got a whole team full of people who've never worked in, in a team before. So we need, to ref we need to look back and say, what's worked for us in the past? What hasn't worked for us in the past? That's what our retrospectives are all about. So we need to be able to reflect on those past experiences and use them to help us inform. But we also need to focus on what's happening here and now, I'm not looking so far ahead of ourselves and looking at high lofty goals going, hang on, we've got a problem right here, right now. So remaining present at the same time, whilst not being stuck in the past or the future. Importantly, we need to understand what's around us. What resources do we have that can help us? Other people, other teams, tools, techniques, other learnings from other parts of the business. Um, what can we use? 
not just us because we're not an island, we're not in a vacuum. We might need to be able to consult and look what else is around us that can help us. So we need to think of that as well. Um, opening to plans, open to deviate, which is what I sort of mentioned before. And the confidence in the team to deal with the unexpected. Now that's an interesting one because that's a matter of kind of trust that, look, things aren't going to go always perfectly, but we're going to trust each other that we're going to do our best together to get through it without shaming, blaming and finger pointing. So there's this confidence that, yes, it doesn't matter what comes, good, bad or ugly, we can rely on each other and know that we've got each other's back. And that's what the kind of environment I want to work in, and I'm sure you do too. So these are a couple of the um, success factors, I suppose, for a team, which we all aspire to. And some of this is, you know, when we think of team, it is a group of individuals that collectively they build this, this kind of bubble of trust, this bubble of working together, and that comes from the team members themselves. So we've got to work towards helping each other create this sense of team together, um, this feeding off each other to help maximise our strengths and minimise our weaknesses together, um, that finding those synergies, finding those areas of cooperation, finding those areas of challenge and also addressing them because, of course, they're always going to be there. So we have to learn to help each other to deal with all this. So I'm going to give you an... Whoa, don't like that. It's probably because I'm too close to a speaker. I used to play in a band myself, and I remember that was my deliberate thing in the band, but I don't want to do it now. So I'm going to give uh, a couple of minutes. So just with the people on your table, if you've just got one or two of you on a table, you might want to join in with the bigger table if you wish. No obligation if you don't want to. But I want you to have a talk about what are the common challenges to teamwork that you've seen or you've heard about, maybe you've never had them yourself, but somebody else that you know has. <laughs> so have a few minutes to talk about your common challenges and I'll come back and hear what you came up with. And there is some stuff on your tables. Ignore them for now, please. We'll come to them in a little while. <laughs> so what are some common challenges you've experienced in your teams? I'll give you a few minutes. Oh, brainstorm. Uh, yeah, if you can write them down and brainstorm, because I'm going to go around and get a few ideas from everybody. Thank you. Thanks for class.
All right. I might get you to finalise that last thought. I can hear that there's absolutely never any problems. It's great to see. <laughs> All right. Okay, so uh, uh, let's, uh, let's come back together now. All right. I feel like I need to go, oi, 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 or something. <laughs> Ozzy, 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 oi, 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 that's what we do, right? You all know that one. Okay, so uh, let's uh, perhaps, who's got, the, if you've got the mic, I might start with ooh, this, this table. Can you share, someone share a couple of yours, please? Hello, everybody. Hello. Thank you. All right. If you'd like to, yeah, thank you. A few, I'm just getting a few shares now. We have got like 10. Oh, so, that's great. <laughs> is it okay to go of course, overall? let's okay. do that. Okay. So, prioritizing individual... Excuse me. Prioritizing individual aspirations over the team's aspirations. Yeah. That is uh, what will result in conflicts, right? Uh, personality traits of the individuals. Yes. Um, clarity of vision or goals is missing. Yes. Unclear requirements. Definitely. Unwilling to share knowledge yes. within or among the team members. Mm. Lack of skill set for yes. few individuals. Um, psychological safety issues. Yes, definitely. Task prioritization issues. Yes. Few people want to work on high quality tasks and the others don't. Uh. Yes. External interruptions and interventions from management also. Fantastic. Yeah. Dependencies across other teams. Definitely. Last one is a low team happiness index. No, not much happiness either. Fantastic. Um, who's got the microphone over there? Yeah, if, can you share a couple there too? Thank yeah. you. Uh, first one is about the consensus building. That is a challenging thing uh, within the teams. And yes. then, uh, as already mentioned, the uh, personality clashes. Yes, definitely. Things. And the lack of uh, role definitions. That's and, big too, uh, yes. You don't know who's responsible and roles is for what. Yeah, they're really big challenges. Yeah. Anybody else got something in particular um, here? Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. I was just, I'll just look at the first one hand. A couple of others that you've haven't already been mentioned. Thank you. Uh, conflict is something. Conflict, yes. And then there is a perception is another thing that is being added. Yes. What else is not covered is uh, power sometimes. Power you know. struggles. Yes. Absolutely. Fantastic. And you had one here? Yeah, I had one thing called uh, growth of new growth. People are in a zone of new growth. So even if they have challenges, they're not on the road. Ah, so I'm just going to paraphrase there. I know the mic didn't make it. People who don't want to ask for help. Yeah. They've got this, I don't, if I ask for help, I'm going to look weak, I'm going to look silly. Yeah. That's, 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 and that's that psychological safety right there. If I ask, I look stupid, and then my face will be ashamed or whatever. And this is terrible. This is horrible, horrible. A dominant member, yes. Power struggles, dominance, that sort of thing, um, which can be really, really tough in any team. It doesn't matter what part of the world you're from. These are all common. So let's see if we've got all my list. Personality clashes, tick. Uh, lack of engagement. Didn't I didn't quite hear that, but that's a really huge one. If we don't feel that we're a part of this and we're disconnected and we're distant and we just don't see the point in it. Now, that may be with the team problem, but it could be a broader problem in the organisation. It could be cultural as well, where we just feel like, you know, what's the point the company's going under or, or perhaps there's um, lack of incentives. There could be all sorts of reasons for lack of engagement. Uh, internal competitions, and that's where that power struggle comes from again. Uh, communication issues, and that could be an interesting one in many, many factors because communication issues in itself is probably a category of all sorts of things, whether it's language barriers, understanding, individual attention, listening to each other, showing respect. It can be many, many things. Um, that's just a big one there. Uh, people working in isolation, yay COVID. How is your team work over COVID? Do your teams work improve over COVID? 
Not many body I know has said yes, really, really, really. It's most people, most people found the distance. We, we started just becoming silos within ourselves. Yes, we had Slack and Teams and messengers of whatever description, and we can ping each other, but that real informal discussion about stuff, you know, you know, stuff, stuff, the stuff that we talk about, which doesn't necessarily have to mean we've got our nose to the grindstone doing work. So that informal part of just pinging ideas around and how is your kids or the cricket score. Well, I was going to say footy, but I know where I am. <laughs> yes, we're not going to talk about the test. It was a shocker. I mean, it wasn't that wicket. Come on. Anyway, um, <laughs> lack of clarity, which was another one. Lack of clarity of roles, lack of clarity of what we're doing, lack of clarity of requirements, lack of clarity of the priorities. Huge problem. Trust issues we talked about. Um, and some of this is cultural, some of in the company organisational culture, I mean, um, and some of that could be just individuals. Um, so learning how to build trust together. And that doesn't happen by me just saying, trust each other and you will. It doesn't work that way. Trust is all sorts of different factors, showing that you're credible, showing you're reliable, showing that you know and understand someone, showing that you've got respect, but it can be undermined by your attitude and your lack of awareness too. So you can build trust with all these things, but it can be undone just as quickly. And that's an individual thing. Um, but we've got to work on it together as a team as well. Um, conflict, tension. Uh, and that's not a bad thing. There's healthy conflict and there's unhealthy conflict. So I think that lack of conflict can also be a problem when we're all just going yes, 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 yes. And I don't like that sometimes with some people from this country. There's a lot of yes, 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 when really the answer should be no, no, no. Please say it. Um, I had a terrible experience one when I did work from a team from Pune, and the lead person kept on telling me, yes, I understand, yes, I understand. And then they'd deliver the next day and clear it. They did not understand, so I didn't pay them until they started saying no. And then that made a difference. Anyway, um, so we need to be able to trust each other to say that. We need to be able to trust each other to say that. Um, insecurity, insecurity about my job, my place, and it could be in, in lots of different areas. It might not just be I'm about to lose my job. It could be insecurity about I feel um, maybe I'm surrounded by a group of genius people and I don't feel my brain powers up to theirs. And that could be quite insecure because you've walked in and you just go, oh, I don't, oh, gee, is this above, am I too deep? Am I working above my head? And that's kind of a good thing because that's something I challenge myself to find people who are better than myself so I can learn from. But that can give you a big sense of, oh, I'm going to look silly. Lack of shared goals. Now we just talked about teamwork. If we don't have that shared and common goal, if we don't, if we're not all pointing in the same direction, we're not going to go well. Uh, there's this little thing called ego. Anybody who studies the Vedas or Buddhist doesn't need to. I can have a whole philosophical discussion about that. I've been studying this stuff for 25 years and ego, well, all right. Uh, lack of transparency, one that didn't come up. A lot of, uh, and it kind of comes to that, I don't want to share. Uh, and that's a real big problem because if we don't want to share, it's because we've got something to hide. Or what happens a lot, if I don't share, then no one else knows that I'm going to make myself look so big and important. Back to ego again. Shame. Okay. Uh, what else? Uh, the team is too big. How many of you work in a team of more than 10 or 12? Yeah, this can be really a big problem. Um, and that's why Agile typically advocates for teams that are 7 plus or minus 2 you know, 10, 12, because when it is too big, it is too hard to stay on the same page and focus as a group. Uh, lunch is a classic example. We don't all, 100, 200, 300 people, stand around having one conversation because it's too hard to focus, it's too much, so we do splinter off, and that's what happens in a big team as well. Okay, so on your tables now, I have a few spare copies. This is, it's on the screen as well. Exactly what's on your tables, you'll find the case study, uh, the challenges of teamwork, and my fictional but not so fictional team. Hang on, where is it? 
I've got a few more if you really want the handout. So it's about DMS, a medium-sized business specialising in telco. Mm, I used to be in telco. I wonder which team this was of mine. Um, so there's the case study. It's the same as on screen. So your task, once again, if you want some more, if you want to hand out a few, if you want to, hand, and if you want to put your hand up and get a, an extra copy, um, there is, um, again, there's some things I've got plenty of copies, some things I don't, but it's for you to do together as a table. So once again, working with the people on your teams, have a read through this case study, probably something you might be familiar with where there's been an emergency release that broke production and everybody finger points. Um, have a read through it and your job is to look at the questions at the bottom. How, what could the team have done to prevent this issue? And number two, how could have they handled the outage and stand up differently? And you'll see that in the scenario. So have a read through that scenario together and see if you can answer the last couple of questions. Once again, I'm going to give you about five minutes to come up with some ideas of how this could have gone better. All right. Any questions before I start? Just five minutes. So read through it together and share together. All right. Anybody need spare copies? There's a few still if you need them. Okay.
just a two-minute warning there. Two minutes. Two minutes. See if you can make some dot points and we'll get some out. One minute, one minute warning. Okay, if you can uh, wrap up that last thought, wrap up that last thought. All right. So if we can uh, come back together now and we'll start sharing some of our thoughts. There's probably lots of, lots of great ideas. So we'll get around to a few of the tables. So, um, so I might ask this table over here to start. That'd be great. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what everybody thought, what some ideas are to uh, done this issue, prevented it. Fantastic. Go ahead. Okay, we will. Thank both you, everybody. Thank you. Thank okay, you. we both will speak together. So one point I want to start with is the CEO. He's the leader of the company, right? So leader has to be accountable. Here, Martin gave an approval. So I think leadership has to be accountable, and they should start with sorry, right? That could have avoided conflict in the stand-ups, and turned the whole stand-up into positive thing. That I think leadership, the one who takes leadership has to be accountable. 100%. Yeah. That is a fantastic point. And that's something that's really important. Um, like with the team, whether we have a team leader or a manager outside the team, they've got to model the behavior that they want. And it doesn't sound like in this case it's done very well. So they have to be accountable that they've created this negativity, perhaps. Yeah. Wonderful point. We have one more point, one, two more points to sure. say. One is about the communication. Yes. So there was no proper communication between the team members. Uh, then we identify that uh, in a stand up that actually um, the leaders were not listening properly. Mm. So it could have been solved at that time if they're listening team members and they can motivate them also for the next time if something is coming up. So okay. that has not been happened. That listening. And, and the reason I want to bring that one and talk about it is, I'm not going to ask for an answer, but just reflect in your own stand-ups. Are you really listening to each other or are you going through the motions? Okay, I see a lot of people doing a lot of this on their phones while everybody else is speaking. That's not listening. It's really a stand-up. The purpose of it is to synchronise and move as one team. And when we don't listen, then we have problems. Great point. And you had another one too? Uh, respect others uh, yes. in a meeting. So that one There's thing. There's no respect shown. And, and that's something that's got to be modelled and the leader must be accountable because he didn't show respect himself. So he's modelled bad behaviour and the team has followed along. There's a saying that the leader gets a cold and everybody else gets the stiffles, right? The leader sets the tone. Fantastic, great. Uh, we identify one more point that is about lack of uh, process. Uh, yeah. It was like change management process or nothing is there in between, so. Absolutely, there's definitely a lack of clarity of the process there, um, particularly around testing, you know, what is and what isn't. Fantastic, thanks for sharing. Uh, where's the other mic? Uh, yep, we'll go over here. I think this, uh, yep, fantastic, this team here, fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, so, Answering how could they have handled the problem, we have uh, written like around 10 points. Go ahead. So by being collaborative uh, is the first that they could have handled the problem better. Yes. 
by having descriptive roles and responsibilities. Definitely. Uh, by being transparent uh, with each other, uh, working as a team and not taking the decisions like it should not be autonomous with the one person. Yes. Uh, team A, if if it would have been on agile, it could have handled the situation better. Say. Right mindset, uh, having the right mindset that testing is needed, it should have avoided the problem. Uh, by not blaming uh, any one person, it could have handled the situation. By being process oriented, having right communication, being respectful, um, and uh, being a leader, not a boss. Ah, oh, yes. That's such a great point, that last one. If you think about leadership versus management, it's leadership it doesn't matter whether your, your reporting line or your pay grade's higher at all, the leadership comes from everybody. And there's a saying from those who play, I know I'm going to be controversial here, DSDM, how many people know what DSDM is? You're not scrummy, so I think you don't know what DSDM is, it's older. DSDM is one of the first. But anyway, when we talk about DSDM and the business consortium, they talk about leadership at all levels from all over, and that's really an important point. Fantastic. Yeah. And last but not the least, a bit technical, if, if they had applied a hotfix uh, and if they had worked on RCA root cause analysis and then uh, worked on the, I mean, post fixing, like hot fixing, that could have also prevented the outage. Mm. Exactly, they could have done a little bit more with um, that uh, analysis, rollbacks, all the rest of it. I mean, hot fix, we know it happens, but there should be a hot rollback too. Hot fix doesn't mean we just proceed forward and, and try to hot fix on hot fix on hot fix. Yeah, fantastic, great. Um, a few other tables, uh, I might go to the back there, thank you. Yeah, um, apart from what uh, already everybody covered, uh, uh -huh. of course, the CEO should have accepted that particular blame and, you know, that way, their uh, stand-up could have been turned out into be uh, mm -hmm. a good team discussion. Definitely. Uh, secondly, you know, more technical on uh, CD testing. That's you know, continuous deployment testing. That's right. Okay, which which was missing, and also automation regression test pack. Yes. Anything that goes into any environment, automation regression pack should have picked up automatically. Yes. And then uh, transparency and communication, which was like uh, purely missing, and you know, it is somebody is taking the call, so that's why. Yeah, so there's a few technical things there that definitely that um, continuous um, regression, having that regression suite constantly being run as a minimum viable regression test or whatever the case might be, too. Fantastic. Uh, over here, thank you. A yeah. couple of uh, other structural issues are like uh, the CEO yes. becomes a bottleneck on making all the decisions across all the departments. Yes. That's a bottleneck that slows down the system. Yes. Uh, yeah, and another one, what we thought is maybe uh, the teams can be having more of end-to-end -end responsibility because one team is doing the development and yes. other activities. Other team is trying to fix those issues. Yeah. If we have that end-to-end -end responsibility, uh, that gives more... Uh, yeah, and th that's an in interesting one too because we know most, many organizations I've worked with, there's one team doing devops -y things and the other team doing client-facing important project feature work. Um, now, that's not a bad thing within itself. But there needs to be cross-team support so you don't get each team kind of becoming completely disconnected from each other. That's a really good point as well. Yeah, fantastic. Anyone else care to share a last, ooh, a last couple there? I'll go just this gentleman and then this gentleman and then we'll move on. Fantastic, thank you. So just one perspective possibly that is not covered, I just wanted to add is a little different spin on the leadership aspect that the leader should have the agile mindset and leader should actually empower the teams. Yes. Leader should not get involved in the whole process. So it's about empowerment of the team saying that you deal with it, I'm there mm -hmm. to support. Mm -hmm. That is one part. And from a daily stand-up, possibly one thing I just wanted to add which was not covered is we need to start daily with the positives. Yes. As the hot fix happened, people worked overnight. I think there was a call out that people spent a good amount of time. So we should appreciate that saying that there's a good work that's being done right. and then talk about what can be done better. I love that. And when we think about feedback, and that's really the point there, feedback is both redirective feedback but also reinforcing feedback, which is needs to be in equal amounts. Reinforcing and acknowledging and those things are just as critical than just getting to the problems. Well, well said. Thank you. I think there's one last point over here. Thank you. So in, in my opinion, uh, there are two behavioral aspects I would like to highlight mm. here. 
One is, uh, before even this event happened, the team worked in isolation. Yes. The leader, the CEO and the expert, right? They worked in isolation without discussing in the stand-up. Yes. That led to the issue. Yep. Right? So that's one. There is an isolation here. Yes. And number two is there is a command and control in yes. the last paragraph. Definitely. And I think she already mentioned it. Yes. Uh, leader versus boss, right? That's right. So there is a command. So when, when the team questions, the leader says, go back to work. Yes. There's a clear display of uh, command and control. Mm -hmm. So it should Absolutely. not have happened. Many others mentioned about this fact. So these behavior issues will lead into these kind of issues. That's what I want to highlight. And these are not uncommon in the real world too. Um, hopefully that wasn't too traumatic for some of you who have been through very similar uh, aspects. This was an actual scenario that I was a part of and we did have that leader, um, that leader who used to go in at three o'clock in the morning after a few scotch and cokes and start coding and we'd wake up in the morning and he shoved it live and we're like, what have you done? And he was one of those people, he was the founder of the company and he said it'd be quite inappropriate. But we also had some other, the, the big thing that's also missing for me was where's my facilitator? And I'm not just saying scrum master, I'm saying facilitator. And I don't mean the CEO in this case. Who was that person who has that servant leadership scrum master mindset that they are there to protect the team? to remove obstacles from the team, to enable the team to give them the right environment and support that they need. For those who know your Agile Manifesto, it's principle number seven. Build teams around motivated individuals, give them the environment and the support that they need and then trust them to get the job done. Someone has to facilitate that process and it doesn't just mean the manager. So there's a few things there. I hope some of these points have rung true because these are things that can happen in any team, in any workplace and often do. Variants of this scenario are probably playing out in teams right now as we speak. So we need to think about those underlying issues. Um, there's, again, it's only a, a short workshop here but it is an important part to think about what are we doing to address these kinds of issues because they're probably, in, some of these might be what's in your team as well. So, um, so just as a call out rather than a team based discussion, what have you seen, what have you used, what techniques have you employed in your teams to create awesome teams? Anyone want just to call them out loud, don't worry about the microphone, we'll probably not be able to get around. Just yell them out nice and loud. Yep. Retrospectives, doing retrospectives in a fun way, yes. uh, like not the regular way, like uh, listing down, uh, having a column of MVPs and rating the sprint from one to five. So making it in a fun way and uh, using Miro boards to do some fun activities um, and uh, having a fun activity hour once a week to, you know, um, make them feel that it's, it's not only about work, it's about, uh, you know, having, building that uh, relationship with the team. That is so important. And you said an important thing there, which can be really difficult and challenging. It doesn't have to be about being staunch, serious all the time. Having some fun with it and that gamification of retros. You can definitely, there's a, a wonderful book for those who want to find out more about gamification of retrospectives. The book's name, you're never gonna believe it, Agile Retrospectives. Oh, I know, I guess what it's about. <laughs> um, but this book is a wonderful one, and it's, uh, there's a lot of this stuff online too. You don't have to just buy a book of gamification ways of making your retros beyond what's worked well, what's not worked well, what are we going to change. There's a million different ways of making it a bit more fun. And I think another important point, it doesn't have to be about work every minute because if we're going to build trust, if we're going to learn to how we're going to get along with each other, we do need to set aside some time for that getting to know you process. Exactly right. Yep, what were you thinking? Yep. We, we follow a process called team norming and storming, especially when we onboard a new team. Mm -hmm. So that through that process, we get to know each other, what are the strengths, weakness, what are they really good at uh, doing. So that would uh, kind of help in building the team. This is especially when you're putting up a team from scratch. Absolutely. Spending that time to kind of introduce ourselves. Fantastic. And yeah. you're going to add? 
Yeah, uh, we have been using one thing like uh, it is something we read. Uh, we may forget what we have done, but uh, no one will forget what we might have felt. Oh, yes. So uh, if we were connecting with empathy and not judging any individual and we clearly said that anything we are speaking, because no one is perfect, things go wrong. So that's where we all have jobs to fix it. That's right. So when we are speaking, it is on that particular incident or the process, not on any individual. So we clearly said that, so everyone stick to it. We'll not call out any of the names. What was missing, what we would have been done it. That's right. And that, that's a really important one for those who might know the retrospective prime directive. It's, um, you can look it up online. Regardless of what we find, we honestly truly believe that everyone's doing the best job that they could given the circumstances, blah, blah, blah. It's almost like we've got to make that a living, breathing thing that's true, not just something that we write up. We've got to make it clear that it's about we're all doing an amazing job here and stuff happens and it's no one's fault. Let's just get on to fixing it without that. And that's a real, you know, that's an individual choice that the team has to help reinforce. Uh, at the back there, some ideas of what makes an awesome team. So, the thing is, people in a team should see each other as people, get to know each other more. If they are calling each other as dev team, testing team, do away with all of that. Mm. Call each other by your names. And in every ceremony, try to find out what the hobbies of the other person are. Yeah. That way, get to know each other more. And it's a, it's a getting to know each other, there's this weird thing in the English language. English is my second language, by the way, so I just want to put it out there. <laughs> there's this thing called intimacy. <gasps> what? Where's this, where's this going now? Oh, my God, we're starting to change tack. No, intimacy is part of what the team needs, and that is that idea that we know each other. It's not what happens behind closed bedroom doors. Intimacy is how we get to know each other. We've got to spend time to do that, that sense of I know you, I know the way you work, I know what you like, I know your communication styles, I know what's happening in your life. I know that you're, <laughs> it just happened to me, my pet just died. Um, but we, all these kinds of things, we know beyond that and we don't just say test team, dev team, and that's scary in itself when you're talking agile because that means we're not working agile straight away. That's the first indication to me that there's no agile going on in that organisation. Um, it's one team and it's a, you know, a squad or a guild or all those things. Fantastic. Uh, another th yeah, some thought yeah. there. One. Uh, Who's got it? Yeah, it's here. Over there. Yep. Yeah. Some award and recognition. Rewards uh, and recognition yeah. can be frightening, fought with danger, but can be... Because when we've got individual rewards and recognition, guess what happens? Uh, I'm going to stump on you so I can get ahead. So be careful with that one. That's make it team-based. If it's team-based rewards and recognition yes, and we all share and we all get the recognition that we're doing awesome, fabulous. But be careful about incentivizing individuals in a team because that will start forcing, unfortunately, the lack of trust and tra the lack of transparency will, unfortunately. So be careful with that one. It can be fought with danger. But I can see it could be helpful too. But Team based in a small way. team, uh, of course, uh, on a rotation base, uh, we just try to manage so that yep. each individual will mm -hmm. get in one quarter or in a month. Yeah, uh, some just note of appreciation, though. some note of appreciation, some thanksgiving, it's some celebration. Celebrate celebration. Together. Yes, that's what it's all about. Celebrating success together. Fantastic. A couple of thoughts here. We'll move on. Um, one thing which we have seen consistently work is. Uh, praise in public and do not reprimand in public. Ah, I love this. Because typically, uh, you know, people who are at multi levels, when you know hierarchical organizations or a matrix organization, mm -hmm. you end up, you know, there will be people will be making some mistakes when they, the similar case that happened, somebody out of the code or whatever it needs to be. As long as you work with levels above and tell them that, you know, just ensure this yes. doesn't happen again. Yep. At a project manager or any other level, you should stop there and take the bullets from whatever escalations coming in That's and right. not let that impact the team. Is how I have seen awesome teams being built and they rally behind you heavily in all exactly. situations. The moment they know that they they have your back, so that's, that's right. And and, and, and you are covering them. That's what they they are kind of looking at from a perspective as a security aspect. And anybody who tries yeah, to tell right. me that they're a team leader, they're the dev yeah. leader, they're the test leader, that means all faults are with you and all success was with everybody else in your team. 
And you've got to be careful what you ask for when you're a leader because that's what leadership is. Yeah, if, the fact, fact is mistakes right. happen. It's just yeah. a matter of, they know they, they'll auto-correct it generally and for those if you behave the, that way. That's right. And for those in the room who say they're scrum masters, how many people think they're scrum masters? Your team is your responsibility. All their failures are your fault. <sighs> what did she say? Oh, my God. True. True that. Um, Scrum Master, that is your role. Your number one priority is to make the team awesome, and if they're not, it's because you haven't gone in and fixed the problem with the team. Obviously not for the team, but with the team. Last one there, and then we'll move on. Yeah. Sorry. So, yep. uh, two experiments uh, that we have tried. One is extension of this uh, team building, where we have taken the team outside, yes. outbound training, so that yes. they stay overnight. That's Oh, and overnight? Yeah. Where's this funding? Hang on, what's this team? <laughs> Have you got a job for me? <laughs> yeah. And uh, the second one uh, is uh, role clarity workshop, especially, yes. uh, especially when the teams are new and they Absolutely. don't know what to expect from each other. So we bring the whole team, scrum masters, product owners, yeah, program everybody. managers, developers, mm. and they call out what they expect that they should do. Yes. And we also call out what others expect from them. Nice. So it's a role clarity workshop which made them Fantastic. really understand each other rather than that uh, coaches or trainers say, okay, as a scrum master, you are supposed to do this. No. So now they decide. My job as a scrum master is not to do the work. My job as a scrum master yeah. is to facilitate you doing the work. Yeah. As a scrum master, ideally, you're doing no work. True. But you're enabling everybody else to do True. it. True. Um, and that's where that facilitation is really something that's been lost in the word scrum master. Your job is to facilitate not to do. I'm going to move on. I'm sorry, I'm just going to put a few of these out, um, only because we're going to run out of time, and we can definitely continue the conversation after this. Um, so creating a shared vision, probably my number one, and that's going back to the previous problems. Uh, social contracts, I didn't hear that too many. Anybody here heard of or use social contracts? We're going to talk about that, because that's obviously the next thing we're going to talk about. Um, Microsoft Teams. I have heard this, and I'm just like, all right, um, it's a great tool, but I wouldn't use it experiment. Team building activities, overnights, going out bowling, whatever the case, case might be, cooking together, try that one, hilarious. Anyway, uh, retros, proper retros, using all those tools, gamification of your retros, um, uh, having rules, team rules, that the team themselves bring in. Um, I, I've worked in many different organisations in many different roles and I worked in a place called South Australia Water which is a government organisation in South Australia, Australia, funny enough, Adelaide and um, I walked in there and they had on the wall our team social contract and our team rules and I said that's awesome, you've got that up there and everybody knows it. They said oh our previous scrum master put it there for us. I said so who came up with them? Oh she did. Not what we mean by team rules. It's the rules by the team, by the, for the team, by the team. Yeah. Yeah, team norms. Exactly right. Team norms, team rules. Um, facilitator, facilitation. Awesome teams don't happen automatically. Someone has to facilitate and be the, the person who's going to be their guide not, and be their team slave. Uh, I often joke for those people in project management, when you go from a non-agile to an agile environment as a project manager, your, t your title changes from project manager to team slave. <laughs> and that's the way you've got to view this. Your job is to be a servant leader, team slave. Um, chartering, team charters, a bit like social contracts. Encouragement, encouraging each other, lifting each other up acknowledging each other, all the good stuff that was being said. Coffee, drinks, and all that sort of good stuff. I'm sure that you've all got that as well. Jira? Anyway, uh, had to put up a, a shared view of work, and that's that transparency, whether we're using team walls, Kanban walls, whatever it is that we're using. Sharing stories, not just user stories, <laughs> but story stories. You know, you know, last week I was doing this with that. And, and having that space and that time. No, not at the stand-up. No, not at the sprint plan. No, but we've got to enable those structures and make it a, yes, it is safe that we can have a bit of a chat. It's okay. 
Yes, we've got deadlines. Yes, we want to do good work, but we've got to make some space for sharing stories. This is my favourite line, and you'll notice that it says author unknown. So I'm just going to say I made it up. But perhaps if you look on the internet, it tells you otherwise, but it does say unknown. We are most effective as a team when we can complement each other with our embarrassment and disagree with our fear. Now, this is something that I live and die by when I'm working in a team or with a team as a coach, is how do we encourage these two factors? Complementing, really complementing in a way that isn't facetious or just lip service, but truly acknowledging stuff in a meaningful way. And, and the same thing with disagreeing. How can we disagree? Because a lack of conflict is showing a lack of trust sometimes too, and that's just a bigger problem. I think we're talking about the dysfunctions of a team. Lack of conflict can also be a problem. So we should be able to say, no, there's a better way. Hey, I've tried this. People don't have to all 100% be on the same page, but we should be able to raise our concerns, raise our differences, voice our opinions without fearing that the team aren't going to listen or aren't going to support. Go ahead, there's a couple of thoughts there. That's right. Can be very good. So paired programming, definitely. I mean, that helps, uh, that transparency too. I think there's another thought over here. It's okay? All right. So team chartering is a big one. How many of you have got team charters or social contracts, team agreements? A few of them are there. Fantastic. So it is a clear documented definition and agreement of the team's purpose, composition, expressive ways of working to help the team remain cohesive and ensure that all team members are clear about the work, how it will be performed and what success looks like. Now, if you don't have something where it's clearly documented and it's left in your head as a, yeah, we all know that. We've got this assumption. Oh, we all know that that's how we work. We all know that when we're doing a stand-up, we only answer three questions. If we assume it without it being clearly documented, what's the problem with that? There's no way of testing. There's no way of saying, hang on. We agreed that in a meeting we weren't going to talk over each other. We're going to have one person speak at a time or whatever the case is. If we've got these clearly pointed out, documented, then there isn't a... Oh, I didn't know. Oh, I didn't know that we were meant to uh, be there, everybody at a stand-up. What are those rules? If we can't write them down solidly, we're going to have problems. Um, so, hang on, I better just double-check that I'm giving enough information, enough time because I went over in my last one and I don't want to go over without the good stuff. What is the time? 2.39. That means we've got and just under an hour. Is that right? Am I right? 20 minutes, ah, no, I have gone over. All right, we're not going to do that. Team chartering has all these things on it. <laughs> I know. Oh, we just because we talk too much, it's, we're having too much of a good time. I thought it was 3.30. No, we started at 1.30, didn't we? Oh. All right, let's go into what you all came for, the team collaboration canvas. Now, you can find this online. I've left copies on the table, and the copies on the table have all the information on the slides. For those tables with extra copies, great. I don't know that there was enough printed. Um, we can get more online. And please get in touch. I can give you a copy if you don't have one. But there should be a few spares around. But it's all good. You can get this. I can send it to you. I can make this available to you. Um, extras, who, need, who needed one? Some spares. Who needed a spare? Yeah, over here. A couple there. Um, there's one more there, okay. There's probably just not enough to go around. Um, I'll let you sort out who's got the spare copies. Please, on the, we'll go through it together on the screen um, and you can get a copy. Just get in touch with me and I will send you it. Just the printing, I don't know whether there was enough printed for the number of people in the room. So my apologies there. I didn't do the printing. <laughs> See, handball, straight up. Okay, so the team canvas is just like a lean canvas but with different sections 
and it's all there to enable us to capture our ways of working and to help us build that awesome team. So it starts with us, funnily enough. Who is this team? For every team member, we make a, a few things like our names, responsibilities. Notice I said name and responsibilities, not titles. What are the things I'm going to do for the team? What are the things I'm going to do to help the team achieve work? That's what we mean by responsibilities. Nicknames, an avatar, you know what an avatar is, a funny little cartoon character that represents you, um, and a saying or a quote. I used to be called Sledgehammer. I don't know why. Maybe because I'm so subtle. I don't know. Anyhow, um, then this is the bit that misses and a few of the problems that you brought up before. Who are we working in and around? We don't exist as an island as a team. What are the other teams around us? What are the company uh, stakeholders around us? What are the team and organisational rules that we must follow as a team? What are our escalation points? Who are we accountable to? All of that good stuff. So it's not just about understanding who we are, but understanding how we fit into the rest of the organisation and making sure that everybody knows we work with team B and C as well, and we have maybe a scrum of scrums every couple of days, whatever it might be. Importantly, that shared vision. So it, shared vision comes in two parts. First is the purpose part. Why does our team exist? Including the value that we are uh, delivering to our customers, the change we want to make in our organisations with our customers, etc., um, and the future we want to create. What's the impact? What do we want to see? Our team deliver happiness. Our teams deliver software people love. Our team to deliver an awesome customer experience. Our team to help people when they're dealing with insurance claims or whatever the case might be. So our purpose is more like that whole kind of high vision, lofty goal. But then we break that down into measurements, objectives that we can count and we can tell, and how do we know that we are achieving our success? So what are those metrics and measures that we can employ that will tell us that we are achieving our mission? Whoops, I haven't put it up there. So how do we track that progress? How many of your teams have something like this in your team charter? Something else I see missing. Yes, we might have a bit of a purpose, but what are those KPIs? What are those indicators that tell my team that, yes, I'm on track? Maybe we need to go and run surveys with our stakeholders. Who knows what it is? But how can we gather the data to know that we're being successful? Um, then we've got the thing that we're working on, the product, service, or whatever it is that we're supporting or creating, whatever that is. What is that? What are the key capabilities? The quality and non-functional attributes. So what are the quality standards that we're maintaining with our products as well? We all typically have them. It could be imposed externally or ones that we've got ourselves. Um, and who are our customers and users? Who is our primary customers? Maybe secondary other customers whose needs we need to satisfy, but then also maybe ones around us that we might need to consider. So as a team, we've got a clear picture of who our customers are that are using, interacting, and benefiting from the products and services that we're creating together. And this becomes our focal point. This becomes part of why we get up in the morning, because we can service their needs. The clearer idea we have up of our customer, the more likely we're going to be able to picture um, what it is going to be that we can deliver to make them happy. By definition, that should be something that you'll find very satisfying. I know that everybody I talk to say half of it is when I see my product being used by my customer and seeing, yes, they love it. Yes, that makes their job better. Yes, that makes something uh, of benefit for them. That, that, that's what really is very motivating. And our wow, wow, way of working, wow. Um, and I like using that term. It's come from a Steve Adler, who talks a lot about um, uh, agnostic agile. It's really very clearly making a list of exactly what tools and techniques, processes and procedures we use. What are those rules? What are those traditions? We had our, every Thursday we had sushi. We had a rule that if the developers, particularly, you know, developers, um, sometimes they don't want to talk to people and get focused work done. 
So we had this tradition that if they put a baseball cap on their screen, it meant do not disturb. That they agreed that they would not be on do not disturb for more than half a day, any, any day. So we had this two-way rule. Um, so uh, how do we communicate? What are our rules around communication? There might be blackout times. I'm seeing more and more, and this is happening in Australia, and I hope it's happening here, we're starting to see mail servers not send emails after 6 p.m. and they don't get delivered till the next day because the rule is an email is next day answer, not you're expected to be checking your emails every five minutes. That's very unproductive. So what are the rules around when we get messages and how we communicate, how we handle emails, what we use in Jira, who updates Jira? Oh my God. Um, don't want to have that argument anymore because it's just the biggest, it's a scrum master. So I'm just going to, for those who ever get a coach by me, you know, it's their job. Your scrum master does all the admin. That's their job. They're enabling you because you've got better things to do. Scrum master doesn't. That's their job. Anyway, sorry, I'm just venting there. <laughs> um, what are the meetings? What are the ceremonies? Who's expected? How, who's facilitating? What are the roles and responsibility? Decision making processes within the team. Um, how do we decide we're going to deploy? How do we decide that we don't need to test something? That's never going to be the case. Um, and what are our boundaries? What can we do and what can't we do? And that comes to that autonomy that we talk a lot about with Agile teams, autonomously able to um, self-organise, et cetera, et cetera. And this uh, canvas becomes that container that then allows us that if we stick to everything in this canvas, we're kind of free to do everything else. So we call out these rules, and then within the rules, if everybody's abiding by them, that should put us on a good um, direction to having that good team set up. So rather than a team charter that you may have, and if it's anything like what I normally see, it's a half a dozen dot points that are in some confluence page somewhere, maybe. <laughs> This is really calling out all the key factors that we've got to get agreement and alignment on, no matter what the answers are. Then the next two parts at the bottom are meant to be continuously looked at in the retrospective process. What are our strengths? What are the things that are helping us? What are the things uh, internally that we're doing that is making us awesome, whether it's skills, competencies, or practices? What are those strengths? And of course, on the other side, what are our weaknesses? What do we need to improve on? What conflicts do we have? All that kind of stuff. Now, this canvas is a great tool for your retros as well. That's the intention behind it and why I came up with it, is if we hold that up at the beginning of our retro, along with the premise that we know that everyone's doing an amazing job, then we can look at, right, how did we go in the right in the previous sprint in the context of what we've already got there with our strengths and weaknesses and what have we agreed to do. You, um, after presenting this at, uh, with another team, they said there should be another section on the canvas for um, changes that we're going to do. Just add it in because I haven't got the ch chance to tell it. But you'd want to record that as well. It's not just a retro tool. But when we're setting up a new team uh, and just talking about inducting a new team member, we might need to alter this because a new team member means that we've got some new, new rules, something else we want to try with them. Maybe they've gone, hey, I've got this idea, and everybody goes, well, let's try that. So you might update this. So don't let this be a set and forget document. This is a living, breathing capturing of how we're going to work together to be awesome together, to hold each other's back. All the things that I talked about and we discussed in the earlier part of this um, this uh, workshop, this email, what was I going to speak about? Um, so we're together talking about this stuff on a regular basis. As I said, retro is going back to what um, uh, our keynote speaker was saying. Why wait for having a retro? That's awesome. That was really powerful for me. Why wait for a retro? And I thought, oh, okay, so we can have this conversation at any time. But certainly as a minimum, every retro. For those who've got the handout, you've got all of these points and all the, those dot points. I can definitely get it to you. So um, the last five minutes of this, because we're nearly out of time, I want you to have a look at that canvas and discuss on your teams the types of things that may go into your canvas. What, what might your canvas contain? 
if you're a team working on an app, what kinds of things might you record? Uh, I know that you're all working at different organisations and perhaps don't work together, but just think about, A, imagine you were working together, what types of things would you add? Now, don't worry about your strengths and weaknesses, but what other things might you record? Just have a quick chat through what you might put on yours. You do have a work example there, but don't worry about that. <laughs> so have a quick discussion of what your canvas might contain if you're taking it back to your workplace, perhaps. Give you a quick chance to have a quick discussion of it, and then we'll take questions. So this is a very quick discussion. Oh, run out of time. Is that on? No. This one? Oh. Uh, thank you for that. Yeah, and also they told me it was going to be a big screen. Uh, ooh, I can. I can, I will. It's easy to do. But, um, you don't really need it. I'll talk about that next. All right. Um, on the sake of I've run out of time, <laughs> which never happens, <laughs> unfortunately, um, I want to just uh, say thank you for being here. Um, I have get, definitely want to give time now to you to ask any questions or doubts that are coming up for you, anything that you want to clarify. Um, the question that was just discussed at the back there was, is this available in Mural, Muro, Jamboard, whatever? Um, I haven't got it, and I'll tell you why. Because you don't kind of need it in a weird way. Um, the document, it's really about having that discussion, how you record it. It doesn't have to be on one of those, and you can set up, you know, each of these um, elements on the canvas are just discussion points for you. 
And yes, I've put it in a canvas only because I had a lean canvas in front of me and I used that as a template. But really those nine elements are for you to think about those questions and make sure that the team has had the opportunity to discuss and confirm and capture them. Now whether you capture them in a confluence page, whether you capture them on a poster on a wall, whether you put them in a jam board or a mirror, does not matter. But I'm more than happy to create some sort of template. I certainly have what I've distributed for those who've got a hard copy. I have the PDF of that. Um, but that's easy for me to translate into, I, I, I'm a jam boarder because then you don't need to worry about licensing. But I can make a soft copy available, but it's really the same as what the, it's really that um, conversations there. But thank you for asking about that. Um, and really, this is, I only want this to be used as a guideline so you can facilitate that conversation. And for those with that dreaded title of Scrum Master, this is a tool for you to facilitate the rest of the team talking about and ensuring that you're making sure that there is agreement and alignment there. And uh, there's a wonderful point made, and I'm sorry I didn't get your name, the point you just mentioned to me about creating an alliance. That's what it's all about. And this is a document to ensure that we can don't leave it to an assumption that we're aligned. We make it clear so we can point to it when we've deviated from it and review so, um, questions and comments? Uh, go ahead. So, this is a beautiful canvas, and I look forward to customizing this canvas. For example, what I found that, you know, like, you know, goals and uh, objectives, right? So it could actually be mapping it to an OKR kind of stuff. So I can actually have for an, um, this particular team could be actually be working on one of the key areas, result areas. And then that would only be just one single metric to track for the quarter. Mm. So this canvas could also be updated along with the team for a quarter. Rather than Sorry. just saying, like, you know, only in the retrospective or only, and this could actually serve as a beautiful tool, and even in that, because your stakeholders sometimes can change. That's it. So your product definition itself could actually be changing, because if you're working on a platform, you might be working on different areas. That's well said. And that's exactly my intention. It's not a static tool. As team changes, as we get new goals, as we get new projects, as we get new teams, because the teams might disband and we get a new team. But I love that updating it with the OKRs and the overall as well. Yeah, and, 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 and even when you're beginning with a new team, the team itself can, uh, if we can use this as a facilitation, facilitation tool itself over there as an icebreaker. So let the teams know each other. Remember when you're at the end of it, they can say, okay, as a team, we are already seeing that these are the strengths within us in terms of skills. And this is the area which we would want to work on. So that's even it. at the beginning also, it makes a lot of... Yeah, and that's why I put that bit of fun of what's my nickname, what's my avatar, what's my, my quote. Um, they're little things that can help break the ice and it can be used, as, as, as you said, as that tool, as a new team to break the ice and, and do this as a, as a set aside, not 10 minutes, set aside a couple of hours and furnish the team with lots of food and drink to do it with so we can really talk this stuff out. Yeah, nice. Thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, oh, over here, we'll, we'll get, uh, there's another mic somewhere. Yep. So how do we validate? Uh, see, we Ooh. were speaking about uh, the current state and the target state, behavioral aspects, I right? I love this question. So how do we validate how we are improving, especially ah. quantitatively? Qualitatively yeah. we'll discuss, but quantitatively, um, metrics of measurement. Yeah, so how do we validate? Well, we ask our team. Uh, you know, it, as part of that continuous discussion, whether it's at a retrospective or not, is are we uh, acting in a way that reflects what we have agreed to? And the team should also all should be saying yes. And there's your qualitative and your quantitative in, in a way because the elements on here should be both quantitative and qualitative. That's why I deliberately set um, goals and objectives, one being qualitative, which is big kind of stuff, and then how the metrics are. But um, part of that goals and objectives is we've got to make sure that that section has what are the measures of we knowing that we're achieving what we intend. 
but then we should be looking at it as a retro to perhaps every retrospective we might bring it up and say, is there anything that anyone's noticed in this sprint that doesn't align to what we've already put up there and start there? Um, maybe it is a case of quickly reviewing it at the beginning of a retro, but that, that becomes a bit too repetitive and then it becomes too, people just ignore it. So but it's definitely a tool I expect that should be looked at as that tool to focus a retro on when we say what's working well, is it the stuff that's still on here and how can we modify it? But yeah, we do need to make sure that as a team we're reflecting back and it doesn't just become something that becomes obsolete. There's a few other questions over here. Yes. Two-week sprints or four-week mm. sprints. It's not like every retrospective mm. we need to check, right? So, any recommendation? Uh, yeah, my uh, the team I used it for, we had it visible. It was actually on a wall, and we just asked the question in the retro: Is there anyone got a concern with anything that we've previously agreed that they don't think needs to change or we didn't do well on? So, rather than it being we need to go through the whole thing, it was just that quick. Anybody want to raise a concern on that, that they want to change something? So it was available at any time. Uh, but uh, just like uh, sum it up, like in every retrospective, we can just bring it once and see if anyone has anything, we can have a conversation. That's it. That's it. Yeah. And in a retrospective, uh, another thing I'm very passionate about, I love my retros. Uh, I used to call the retro queen for a good reason. Um, if my retro ends without a clear task list and people agreeing to do things, something's gone wrong, a retro should have result in an action plan that forms the input into your next sprint planning session because those uh, countermeasures from your retro must be added to your sprint plan. And if it isn't, something's gone wrong and your scrum master needs to come talk to me. <laughs> Oh, oh I, give, I, I train a lot of scrum masters and the ones I train know. <laughs> anyway, that's just me because I'm mean. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yep. So this uh, team collaboration canvas like can be uh, applied in two scenarios. One, the team when it's new or one, another one, an existing team where you can also uh, ask them. Yes. So we can always expect resistance when we try to do for an existing team, why we know, we have been knowing each other, we have been working each other for almost a year, why do you want to suggest this as a change agent or as a coach mm, mm. when we try to implement this yeah. or suggest this basically. Mm. So in your experience, what kind of resistance like you have heard especially from those experience team and how you have addressed mm. that? Um, a lot of people don't want to What's the word? There's a bit of fear going on usually. We don't want to document it because when it's documented, then we've got something we can point on it and then yeah. there's suddenly people who perhaps were hiding or getting away with bad things now can't. Um, I would want to lean into that and say, what is the issue here? Why is this a problem doing it? And I also might think that if I've got a team that's been working together for a lot of time, and they don't have any issues and they are highly productive and highly effective and everyone's happy, maybe it's not necessary to. It's not like we should impose it. But it's certainly a tool to in foster that continuous improvement mindset because no matter how awesome your team is, I guarantee you there'll be a way that you can just, there's always something better you can do. Um, so I would want to find out what, if there is an individual, because it's usually one or two individuals that say, this is rubbish, we all know this stuff, this is a waste of time, I'd want to find out oh, what, what particular concerns you, why do you think it's a waste of time? Are we all, if they say we've already been doing it, so there's absolutely nothing in this team that needs to be addressed, no problems to be solved, no improvements to be made. Um, and rarely that will, as soon as you kind of frame it in that way, but um, I wouldn't make it Perhaps with existing teams, I'd sort of, yeah, be, be cautious. But, yeah, I'd, I think it's a good tool. <laughs> if you haven't got this stuff, you know, called out, just ask them. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I think we're being kicked out of here. <laughs> um, I've got a couple of Aussie hats who'd like to join the Australian cricket team. 
<laughs> I know I've got a few key contributors. I am looking for that. I'll ask you. And I'll ask you. It'll find and please don't leave any koalas or kangaroos behind. They get lonely and they cry. <laughs> um, so please share them out. I hope everyone's got a little Aussie souvenir as well as that canvas. Um, I'm just going to put this on the back. Ah, this is me. Um, find me on LinkedIn. I am on no other social media. I don't waste my time. Um, so, but I am on LinkedIn. So find me on LinkedIn. Contact me by email. I can send you copies of the canvas and I'm more than happy to continue the conversation. Thank you all for being here. I hope it's been insightful, useful, and you can go away and use this canvas with your teams tomorrow. All the very best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll just unplug.